Hi. Today, uh, we're going to discuss about transport phenomena in biological systems for medical engineering. So, uh, we will study about this um, understanding the role of transport processes, uh, especially related to biological systems. For that, we will discuss about diffusion um, and convection and physiological transport. Uh, these are the references. So let's first think about the role of transport processes in, in our biological system. So for cells and organs and tissue to function properly, we know that oxygen, nutrients, and uh, regulators of growth and function must be moved rapidly to and through them uh, so that the organ, organisms control these concentrations of molecules in our tissues and our organs. Or, and changes in these transport processes are important factors in many diseases, such as uh, you know, atherosclerosis and kidney diseases. So why uh, mechanical or engineering um, uh, understanding of these transport process is important for our biomedical engineers? So we can uh, raise some of the examples why these are important. Uh, one example is when someone has a kidney failure, uh, he or she may need a uh, hemo, uh, uh, hemodialysis, meaning that he needs to go to hospital for now, a couple of times a week to, uh, to uh, replace the function of kidney by using a machine called the hemodialysis uh, machine. So that you can see it here, so that it, it removes the waste and filter out the, the blood. Also, another uh, example is there are uh, open heart surgery, where it is uh, sometimes uh, people have a uh, coronary arterial disease, a narrowing down of the coronary artery, which can cause uh, angina and even like myocardial infarction or, or heart attack. And to prevent that, um, if there are so many, and depending on the situation, uh, the doctor may want uh, to have a major surgery called CABG, C A B G, stands for coronary artery bypass graft, which requires an open heart and taking off a big veins in the patient's leg and then using that um, uh, want to bypass the narrowed down coronary so that to perfuse. So, during the time of this heart, major heart surgery, the patient also need uh, a perfusion uh, to the uh, lung so that it, uh, the blood should be able to um, oxygenate. So to replace this function during the surgical time, we need a machine so-called heart-lung machine. And that's uh, described in here, so that instead of the the patient's heart, which is undergoing a surgery, we have a sophisticated uh, machine which will replace the function of the lung during the surgery. So this is all involved in transport phenomena. So let's uh, discuss a little more of transport processes in biological system. So this physical phenomena involved in the transport of molecules is, you already know, diffusion and convection. So diffusion is a random migration of molecules or, or small particles that arises from molecular. So diffusion, if you look at it at microscopic scale, you know, we recognize that these, um, let's say even molecule, uh, liquid, water, uh, these molecular collisions are, are due to thermal energy resulting in the mixing or uh, mass transport. So that's the first is molecular collision is uh, the most important physical process at the microscopic scale for the diffusion phenomena. Uh, on the other hand, we also know that a bulk motion of this fluid or, or 
all heat. So that kind of collective movement of molecules from bulk motion of fluid, such as a liquid or gases, are called convection. And these two processes are uh, very important. Uh, for specifically for biological systems, especially for uh, the basic unit of um, uh, our body as a cell. So cell membrane, across the cell membrane, the transport of molecules is very, very important. So transport by binding interaction is another uh, set we want to discuss as a non-covalent interactions between molecules that can lead to transport of molecules in and out of the cell. For example, selective transport molecules into the cell, such as glucose, which is the most, uh, one of the most important uh, molecules. So let's get started with us talking about diffusion. So I brought one picture which shows everyone's familiar with an ink, drop it on the water, and that ink has a very high concentrated uh, molecules of the dye and they interact with the nearby water by constant, by lots of times of collisions and that makes the ink molecules spread out over time and that's more or less we recognize mm, goes to from higher concentration to lower concentration. So the definition of the diffusion is net movement of a substance from a region of high to a region of low concentration. So we know that these molecules are in constant motion and at the uh, physical point of view uh, with uh, some, some temperatures, temperature is important, the molecules are having a thermal energy that leads the molecule to constantly moving as a kinetic energy. So for example, the albumin. Albumin is the most abundant protein inside of blood plasma. And that has a molecular weight of about 68 kilodalton. And um, from a um, statistical mechanics point of view or physics point of view of this microscopic scale, you can calculate the kinetic energy of this albumin molecule and the thermal energy, which is represented by a Boltzmann constant. And once you calculate it in one dimensional space, you will be surprised at the average speed of albumin molecule in one side is in fact even six meter per second due to thermal energy itself. So how fast that is, you know, the tiny albumin molecule can move in six meter, it's almost the size of the room in one second. Even with this high average speed, how, but we, we, we never think like this, our booming molecule in our blood, um, how they cannot move between different locations in our body such quick way. Yeah, because they are inside the blood vessel and um, they are constantly colliding with each other molecule. So it's not a free space and changing. So think about if single albumin is one, uh, but uh, you know, this is usually inside a blood plasma. So they constantly colliding, interacting with the water molecule mostly. So once they collide, they change direction. So it's not always unidirectional. So there are changing the directions and that random changing direction of movement, we call this uh, more of a mathematical point of view, we call this as a random flux. It's coming from thinking about a drunken, you know, a drunken driver who came out of the road and led the drunken people to walk around. And, you know, he can average uh, move but the problem is the direction is randomized. Eventually you realize the average displacement remains the same. So random works. So molecules that are initially placed in one location and tends to spread out over time. And this process of spreading is, we can call it diffusion. So diffusion is a very important um, uh, ways of transport and mixing of molecule 
at a, a small distance. However, because of the, this random nature of direction, unfortunately, over time, the average uh, location may not change much, which means diffusion is a very effective process in a uh, small, narrow, uh, spatial, but for far away, it takes a longer time. So we will discuss this further later. And on the other hand, what, what about uh, diffuse, uh, convection? Convection is a bulk motion of, a, uh, uh, of molecules, uh, especially with the a flow of fluid or gas uh, motion. So the definition of convection is collective movements of molecules from bulk motions of fluid. And, and that has a very interesting implication because it can overcome the limits imposed by diffusion phenomena. Because the movement of molecules or cells are, they are just sitting there in the bulk of the environment, uh, uh, environment actually moves to transport by fluid motion. So fluids um, flow following how does the fluid uh, move? And we know from uh, basic uh, fluid mechanics point of view. So, you know, that bulk of this uh, fluid can, can displace by applying force. So such that like flow can be generated. For example, gravity can cause a fluid motion. You can think of it a river or a force and pressure differences, like in our cardiovascular system, the heart creates a pressure difference, which is the driving force for all this circulation of our blood uh, flow. Or the other example is a shearing force. Usually that occurs as a, um, a dragging force, but the shear is important. So I'm here I put a drawing for shear force, a conceptual. You can think of a fluid volume here, and um, you can think of a honey, and then you have uh, this uh, plate on top of the honey, and then you pull it. Then think about it. That honey is like very highly viscous um, fluid, but they will deform and follow this on top part, maybe not the lower part. And that can be Consider the here. So you have the area A, you have a plate, you drag it down to displace one about D and the velocity as a V. And, and, and that force of, on, and this force is called a shear force. And that can cause this fluid element to deform. And, and, and this will be redefined as a, a shear stress or shear strain. So where comes the fluid motion in fact? In fact, the fluid motion is coming from these uh, shear force uh, or stresses. So shear is on one side and normal pressure is another side. So stress is, um, in engineering point of view, can be defined as a force per unit area. And because it's a force, it has a direction. So uh, related to this fluid, uh, the interaction of uh, force application is important. So one is, as I described it here, and the forces can be applied a tangential, tangential to the surface, causing two contiguous parts of the material to slide relative to each other. Uh, a good example for where this happening is our joints, okay, this joint. Uh, or our eyelid, when we close down our lid on top of our eyeball. So that is uh, the force per unit area we call a shear stress. And uh, on the other hand, forces which is perpendicular to a surface which can be compressive or grabbing and tension or tensile force, uh, that force is a per unit area is called a normal stress. And this both shear stress and uh, normal pressure differences results in fluid motion. 
And here's an example of normal force. So we can think of this fluid element as two units, and we are pulling it down, pulling it a, a, um, apart with the uh, force of F and different aspects. Then the holding down of this area A, uh, we can think of the forces across here uh, at the normal as a force F and F based on Newton's um, principle of third principle of mechanics, uh, action and reaction, if this is still stay there. So the average force per unit area we call uh, normal stress. So now get into uh, more of a, a cellular aspects and binding interaction. So molecular transport in addition to this diffusion and convection can be influenced by non-covalent interactions between two different molecules. So binding interaction we can define as a specific interactions serving as means of chemical recognition, selective transport, and cell signaling amplification. So the one example is, uh, let's think of an antibody antigen binding. So in our body, foreign molecule uh, or antigen, which means antibody can recognize it as coming inside our body. We have antibodies uh, in our blood plasma or in our um, uh, lymphatics. So they recognize antibody or cells in the body that antibody molecule, uh, which binds to a antibody binds to a foreign molecule or antigen, then these complex can be recognized by immune cells. And that immune cells can uptake this because this is a foreign, uh, foreign molecule. Okay, so antibody binding enables our immune system to recognize or immune cells recognize and remove the foreign molecule and, and uh, foreign bacteria cells. So that's uh, kind of a mechanism we have uh, by this uh, cellular or molecular level of binding interactions to cross uh, these molecules into our uh, cell membrane. An example, uh, another example is selective transport of molecules into our cells. So we know that the cell membrane has a lipid uh, bilayer structure. Not all molecules will be able to cross freely. So we have sometimes a transporters which binds to specific ions and small molecules which enable to pass across the cell membrane because our cells need a transport of molecules in and out. And, and sometimes these transport is not passive, meaning no energy use, but uh, we use our own energy called ATP uh, to, for actively transports, uh, even like reverse concentration gradient. So transportation of molecules against a concentration gradient, meaning that, hey, we have a higher concentration of molecule inside, but we still need more then just naturally diffusion will, uh, direction will be the opposite, but we could have a specific transport portal to move the, the molecule across uh, uh, against the concentration gradient. A good example is to keep our um, concentration of a potassium high inside the cell, and uh, high inside, uh, outside of the uh, sodium concentration outside of the cell, and they can be managed. So this process, in fact, requires energy uh, because we are against the concentration gradient. Or sometimes a uh, cellular process, which is forming the vesicles deriving from our plasma membrane when hormones or uh, proteins bind to receptors on the cell membrane, then it either sometimes the cells uptake uh, uh, that molecule inside or cells can spit out called exocytosis. So this is called endocytosis. It's an example for uh, crossing these molecules uh, moving in and out of the cell. So I have a uh, picture here to explain this passive and active transport endocytosis across cell membrane. So here, 
depending on whether we need energy or not, passive versus active transport. So some uh, small molecules, polar molecules, such as CO2 and oxygen, they can cross the cell membrane by simple diffusion. But some other molecules um, may need a transporter um, uh, or integral protein molecule uh, or channels, they can have facilitated diffusion. But these are uh, higher concentration to lower concentration. So it's a simple diffusion process. However, sometimes in this case, uh, this uh, rectangular molecule is high here, but still we want more of this transport direction heat. Against this concentration gradient, we do need an energy. So that we call active transport, such as ion transporters or protein transporters or pumps, or uh, even endo exocytosis requires energy. So here is a, a picture of endocytosis. Uh, one example is phagocytosis. Phago means eating. So let's say some immune cells such as a phagocyte or macrophage want to uptake uh, uh, foreign molecules such as a pathogen so, or solid particle. Here you can see plasma membrane or wrap, invaginate and grab the solid particle to, to get inside. Uh, a good example is in our gut, a lot of these um, food molecules are uptaken by uh, this endocytosis. Another example is called pinocytosis. It's kind of extracellular fluid part, these molecules we grab it and then pass through the cell inside the cytoplasm. And or our cell membrane has a specific receptor types and that specific receptor bind to molecules, so-called maybe a ligand, then they will um, uh, create this uh, coated pit and receptor mediated endocytosis happens. So they grab this and getting inside our cell. So, that's it for, for now. Uh, next time, we will discuss more in depth into the diffusion process. Uh, thank you for your attention.